So you came to this video because you're looking for the best 4K video editing laptop under $2,000. And I wanna introduce you to the Computer Upgrade King Model Z. Now the Model Z is something that falls into a subset of custom laptops. And when I first heard of custom laptops, I was kind of exploring around and seeing what was out there. And a lot of times they're big, thick, chunky gaming laptops. And so in the past, I haven't been impressed by them. And so when the guys at Computer Upgrade King told me they were sending me a custom build from them, I was a little hesitant. They've sent me awesome gear in the past, so I knew that they'd be you know, doing something right here. But still, I just, what I'd seen in the past, I wasn't really stoked about, especially if I'm offering this computer to video editors, motion designers, graphic designers, who care not only about the performance, but also the usability and the aesthetic. And so that's what we're looking at today right here. We're looking at my first impression all the way up to what I believe now after using this laptop for some time and how it performs in real life scenarios. And so if you're interested as we're going through this video, the cost and some more details about this computer, you can head down into the description below, grab a link there that is an affiliate link. So I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps these videos coming out and these helpful reviews coming your way. You can also snag a discount code Ben three, and that will get you a discount code over on computer upgrade King. Without further ado, let's jump into the review. The first thing I want to look at is the experience and the usability. So on the day to day, what is it going to be like to use this computer? We're talking about battery life, color accuracy, Talking about the weight of the machine, uh, what it looks like, what it feels like, how it gets around town in your backpack, all those different things. So that's the first thing I like to look at. Now, when I first pulled this machine out of the box, I was very impressed. It has an all aluminum top cover, keyboard deck, aluminum all the way around the edges. So next to the ports and it has an aluminum grate so like for the vents for the fans on the bottom and so this is something i really hadn't seen was that much aluminum on a custom machine and so immediately i thought man i'm digging this machine right off the bat which i didn't expect so from there i open the screen up and i'm greeted by a webcam on the top bar that is something that normally causes a lot of thickness on that top bezel what i liked is there wasn't a huge top bezel which then also allowed for a nice thin bottom bezel. So it makes looking at that screen really enjoyable. As you move into the performance of the screen, this screen has a refresh rate of 144 Hertz, which is fantastic for gaming and also helpful for video editing. Now, one thing that I know people are super concerned about is color accuracy. And so you don't have to be afraid here. This has about a 95% RGB color accuracy. So if you don't know a lot about color accuracy, you wanna get as high of a percentage as possible because that's the amount of color your screen can produce accurately. So 95% is just right up there, fantastic color accuracy for designers, motion designers, video editors, et cetera. Next, the weight of the computer. So I was really stoked. I reviewed the Strix, the Strix 2, uh, the Strix 2 17 inch, the HP Omen, and all those computers weighed in at a little over five pounds, five, five and a half, five point six. 5.6. This computer weighs in at 4.63 pounds, which I think is fantastic. My Dell XPS 15, which I consider, you know, a high performance, lightweight laptop is actually like 4.41. So just a hair over my Dell XPS 15. Um, it's a nice small form factor as a 15 inch computer. So you're gonna have no problems putting it in your backpack, taking it around town. The only thing that you're gonna wanna keep with you is that charger. The battery life is not great on this machine. You're gonna get about two and a half to three hours if you're really using this machine. And so that's one area that I know people are saying, okay, I love all this performance, but the battery life just kind of stinks. And that's something you're gonna have to do a little bit of give and take with, with this laptop specifically. This machine does have a mechanical keyboard. I love it because it has a really rich feeling. Uh, it's very crisp, very sharp. Um, you really feel that key travel. It is a little bit loud. So there's a few things that I'm not fond of about this computer, um, and they're not deal breakers, but just so you can be aware of as far as preferences are concerned, the mechanical keyboard is fairly loud. So if you're gonna go to a class or if you're gonna be in a meeting and you're typing a lot of notes on this computer, you might annoy a few people because it's, it's pretty clanky.
So as we're talking about that noise with that mechanical keyboard, know that this machine does use quite a lot of fan speed to keep it cool. And so it's gonna produce a good amount of noise. And so if you're somebody who doesn't want noise and fan speed, that's something you really need to be aware of. All right, so as we're continuing through usability, let's talk about the ports on the side of the machine. This is something that I find very important to me. I use dual monitors. I have a lot of things hooked in my computer for live streaming and video editing. And so ports are important to me and I want you to consider your daily life and what ports you might need. This machine specifically comes with two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0 port, one USB-C port, one HDMI port, two mini display ports, one SD card slot, one network jack slash ethernet port, uh, one headphone jack, and one microphone jack. So I would find this computer to be very well suited for my needs. Uh, it would have everything that I need as far as hooking into ports on the day to day. If that's something you need, then check the specs, make sure it's what you want for your computer. All right, moving into build quality. Build quality is something that I, as a original Apple guy and now an owner of a Dell XPS 15, find very important. From the first glance, the aluminum body and keyboard deck of this machine was very, very it made me happy, we'll just say that, because I, I, I find that so many machines have kind of cheap plastics, a lot of polyurethane on them, and so just being able to get a hold of a machine that you're not worried if you you know if you drop something on it, it's just not gonna crack or shatter. It, it might dent a little bit, and that was the thing with all my old MacBook Pros. I never had them crack or break, but they would get dents from time to time because stuff happens, and that's what I love about these machines is they're gonna be far more durable than your average plastic polyurethane build. Now there is some polyurethane on the bottom, but like I said, there's that aluminum grate, which I believe just creates great airflow and is far more quality than just having a plastic grate. I love that front RGB light. I love the hinge. It's a very smooth hinge to open and close. And if you push a little bit at the center, because it's a dual hinge, you'll get a little bit of flex, but I wouldn't be too concerned about that unless you're like, swinging your computer by the screen or something. One thing, and this kind of adds to my things that I'm not really stoked about about this machine, is that when you open and close the machine, right as you get to the closing point, and then it's finally closed, there's not a lot of tension there on the hinge. Um, and so when you, it, it almost, I think the word that I like to use is floppy. It almost feels a little bit floppy at that last quarter inch, half inch of uh, where the screen opens and closes. Uh, so where a hinge normally like secures it down and holds it pretty snug, this one has a little bit of give with the hinge. So just something you wanna be aware of. I wanna give an honest review here because once I get into the performance, you're gonna think I'm like super biased because I think this machine just kills it with the performance. All right, so now let's dive into the performance. I think this computer is very well equipped to handle 4K video editing. As I was running the clips through, the playback would run at full quality with no lag, which is great because right now when I run other computers like my Dell XPS 15, I've got to run it on like one fourth quality to be able to make it play back smoothly. So the playback is fantastic. And that is all a compliment of the RTX 2070 Max-Q. This computer also comes with 16 gigs of RAM. It has the latest ninth generation i7-9750H hexa-core 2.6 to 4.5 gigahertz processor. It also comes with a solid state hard drive at 500 gigs and a one terabyte storage drive. During this review, I'm saving to the solid state in order to get the maximum performance when working with video editing. All right, now let's dive into some real world tests. I'm gonna take a nine minute 4K clip, put it into Premiere Pro, and then export it out to 4K YouTube settings. The Model Z will do this in seven minutes in 23.5 seconds, which is a fantastic benchmark for a 4K export. It's all a complement of that i7 9th gen processor. The next thing I wanna do is take that same clip, it's a 4K clip, nine minutes, put it into Premiere Pro, and then export it out to 1080p YouTube quality. And this machine will do it in two minutes and 15 seconds. So substantially faster going down to 1080p. So if you're trying to do, you know, take 4K and edit it out for YouTube at 1080p, you're gonna get super fast export times. The fans did a really good job of keeping the machine cool through this process. When this machine is idling, it idles at around 45 degrees Celsius, which is about 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Now when you're exporting, the CPU starts to heat up and you're gonna get up to about 75 or 80 degrees Celsius, which is around 170 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And like I said, as it begins to export, those fans really start to turn up and so you will get a good amount of noise, but it does keep your machine rather cool 
which is a big bonus. All right, so if you're a graphic designer or maybe a motion designer or a video editor who is heavily using some motion design within their production, how much rendering time can this RTX 2070 Max-Q be looking at? Well, if you render out 3,000, 330 frames, which is the test that I did. It took about two minutes and 56 seconds, which is a, a fairly good render time for that amount of frames. And so if you're going to do an exponential scale of that, just times, you know, the 3000 frames, the three minutes, and give or take, you'll kind of understand how quick this machine is for your specific needs. And the last test I'd like to do is for graphic designers specifically, and that's putting a raw photo into Photoshop, boosting it up to like a two gig file and then saving it out as a full quality JPEG, just to test the performance of Photoshop as you're working through your day to day and saving files, exporting things, doing save as, etc. It will save out that two gig raw file in about nine seconds. So it's very fast being that my Dell XPS 15 usually takes about 35 to 45 seconds to do that same task. So it's a quick machine for saving out, for rendering, for exporting. Uh, I've been very impressed by this machine. So all in all, I love testing the Model Z. Again, if you're interested in this computer, you can head down into the description below, grab that affiliate link. I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you and get yourself a really good 4K video editing laptop under $2,000. My name is Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com. Subscribe if this video has been helpful for you. Mash down on that like button. Drop me a comment if you have any questions and I will see you here on the next episode.